Detroit built millions of engines, but only a handful earned unkillable status. The Ford 300 solved durability with brute simplicity. The Chevy LM7 combined strength with tuner potential. The Pentastar overcame early flaws through smart engineering. Their solutions were different, but the result was the same. Engines that refused to die. Now we determine which solution worked best. When Ford introduced the 300 cubic inch inline six in 1965, they weren't trying to build the most powerful engine. They were building one that wouldn't quit. Its seven main bearings and gear-driven camshaft design set it apart from other truck engines of the era. Most competitors use five main bearings and chain-driven cams. Good enough for standard use, but prone to wear over time. The 300's overbuilt internals gave it an advantage in durability from the start. The trade-off for this ruggedness was power. The 300 produced just 170 horsepower in its early configurations. Modest compared to VI-8s of the same era. But horsepower wasn't the point. The engine's 265 pound-feet of torque meant it could pull heavy loads without strain. But the 300 wasn't just found in Ford pickups. It powered UPS delivery trucks, agricultural equipment, and even wood chippers. Industrial operators favored it because it ran smoothly under constant load and rarely broke down. Mechanics appreciated its straightforward design, which made repairs easier than modern overhead cam engines. Fuel efficiency was another selling point. Ford advertised some 300 equipped trucks at 20 miles per gallon, an impressive figure for a heavy-duty engine in the 1970s. This made it appealing to fleet buyers who needed low operating costs. The engine's long stroke and conservative tuning kept fuel consumption down while still delivering strong low-end torque. Even today, restored Ford trucks with the 300 often fetch premium prices, not for their speed, but for their durability. By the time the 300 was discontinued in 1996, it had earned a legacy as one of the toughest engines ever built. Its 31-year production run outpaced most competitors, with many units still in service today. The 300 wasn't about breaking records. It was about outlasting everything else on the road. This simple, unstoppable design cemented the 300's reputation as the Swiss Army knife of motors. It didn't excel at any one thing. It excelled at everything owners threw at it. While the 300 thrived on versatility, Chevy took a different approach with the LM7, focusing on strength that tuners would later exploit. When GM launched the LM7 in 1999, as part of their Vortec 5 3000 lineup, they built it for one purpose, to power trucks. The 5.3 liter V8 featured a cast iron block paired with aluminum heads delivering between 270 to 295 horsepower and 315 to 335 pound-feet of torque. These weren't groundbreaking numbers, but the engine's real value wasn't in stock form. It was in what tuners discovered it could handle. The LM7 small 3.78-inch bore gave it unusually thick cylinder walls. That simple design choice made it exceptionally resistant to high cylinder pressures. While other truck engines struggled with forced induction, the LM7 could handle boost without major internal upgrades. This made it a favorite for turbo and supercharger builds. Tuners quickly realized they could push these engines well beyond factory limits, sometimes doubling the original horsepower with minimal reinforcement. But the LM7 wasn't just a tuner's toy, it was also a workhorse. Contractors and fleet operators racked up hundreds of thousands of miles in Silverados in Tahoe's with this engine. The cast iron block resisted wear better than many all aluminum designs, and its simple push rod valve train required less maintenance than overhead cam competitors. Oil changes every 5,000 miles, regular coolant flushes, and timing chain inspections around 150,000 miles were enough to keep many running past 300,000 miles. What made the LM7 unique was its dual identity. Stock versions hauled construction gear and towed trailers for years without issue. Modified versions ran low 10 second quarter miles or powered off road trucks with twin turbos. This versatility came from its basic but rugged construction. Unlike the Ford 300, which relied on simplicity for durability, the LM7 was overbuilt in ways that made it adaptable. Not just strong, but also easy to upgrade. Another key advantage was cost. Being a mass-produced truck engine, LM7s flooded the used market, 
junkyards and classified ads listed them for as little as a few hundred dollars. Budget builders could start with a stock engine, add a turbo setup for under $2,000, and make reliable 400 horsepower. Few engines offer that price to performance ratio. The LM7's legacy isn't just about tunability, it's about versatility. It did its job reliably at construction sites while also becoming a blank slate for horsepower experiments. Few engines bridge that gap as well as GM's 5.3 liter. While it thrived under modification, Chrysler's Pentastar took a different approach. It had to overcome serious early flaws to earn its reputation. The Chrysler Pentastar arrived in 2011 to replace several outdated V6 engines in Chrysler's lineup, including the 3.8-liter pushrod design, an all-aluminum 3.6-liter V6 with dual overhead cams and variable valve timing. It represented a major leap forward in technology. But why choose this engine over the 5.7-liter Hemi? While the Hemi offered more power, it carried significant drawbacks. Its two-valve-per-cylinder design limited efficiency, and its iron block added unnecessary weight in smaller vehicles. The Hemi also used a timing belt requiring regular replacement, while the Pentastar adopted a maintenance-free chain. For daily drivers and work trucks, where fuel economy mattered, the Pentastar made more sense despite its smaller displacement. Admittedly, the Pentastar's reliability did have a rough start. Early production engines from 2011 to 2013 were known for issues with cylinder heads and internal manufacturing debris remnants. However, Chrysler responded by extending warranties on affected cylinder heads and engines, showing commitment to fixing the issues. And just a few short years later, ratings for Pentastar-equipped vehicles were upgraded from poor to excellent or very good for engine reliability. A rare rebound in the automotive world. Models like the Ram 1500 and Jeep Grand Cherokee became known for their durable powertrains, proving the Pentastar could deliver modern efficiency without sacrificing longevity. Part of this reliability came from smart engineering choices. The timing chain eliminated the replacement intervals required by belts. Dual variable valve timing improved both power delivery and fuel economy across the RPM range. Chrysler even specified 9,000-mile oil change intervals though we would definitely recommend changing oil more frequently for maximum engine life. These features helped the Pentastar achieve a balance between performance and durability that earlier Chrysler V6 engines lacked. Later updates refined the package further, and what began as a problematic new design matured into one of the most dependable V6 engines on the market. The Pentastar story shows how modern engines can achieve reliability once reserved for simpler designs. Initial flaws gave way to impressive longevity thanks to responsive engineering fixes. While it lacks the simplicity of the Ford 300 or the tuner appeal of the Chevy LM7, the Pentastar demonstrates that smart design and continuous improvement can produce a truly durable modern engine. Now that we've examined all three engines, deciding which engine truly earns the unkillable, title requires weighing three very different approaches to durability. The Ford 300's 31-year production run speaks volumes about its longevity. Its seven main bearings and gear-driven camshaft created an almost indestructible design that powered everything from pickups to industrial equipment. You could run these engines with minimal maintenance for decades, but while it excelled at lasting forever, it lacked adaptability. The inline-six couldn't be easily modified for more power, limiting its appeal as vehicles evolved. On the opposite end of the timeline sits the Pentastar. After early cylinder head issues were resolved by 2013, Chrysler's V6 became a model of modern reliability. The aluminum block and dual overhead cams represent contemporary engineering, offering better power and fuel economy than older designs. This brings us to the Chevy LM7, which strikes the best balance between the 300's toughness and modern capabilities. Its iron block and small bore created cylinder walls thick enough to handle forced induction without expensive modifications. While built for trucks, tuners quickly realized its potential. Stock bottom ends routinely handle 500 plus horsepower with basic bolt-ons. Yet it remained reliable enough for contractors who needed a 300,000 mile work truck. This dual purpose capability sets it apart. 
All three engines earned their place in truck history, but the Chevy LM7 stands as the most complete package. It bridged the gap between old-school durability and modern tunability better than any other engine here. Whether you needed a dependable work truck or a platform for serious horsepower, the LM7 delivered without compromise. That rare combination of strength, adaptability, and accessibility makes it the true king of unkillable truck engines. The debate won't end here. Ford loyalists will champion the 300's simplicity, while Pentaster owners point to its modern refinements. But when evaluating which engine truly refuses to die while meeting the broadest range of needs, the LM7 has the edge. It mastered the balance between workhorse reliability and high-performance potential in a way neither competitor could match. All three proved longevity isn't about raw power, but smart engineering. Which one do you think deserves the title most? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more battles of automotive legends by subscribing to Engine Innovator.